Well, I'm really, really happy to work on Tim here with us in, in life, and I'm very happy that we are able to do this again. We are tested, everything is fine. So, you know, no, no worries for us. Um, Tim is a type designer living in Munich, well, a little bit outside, so, so, sort of, uh, Gaching. Uh, you hold a degree in architecture of the University of Karlsruhe. And of course, an MA in type design mm -hmm. yeah, of Reading, uh, the Reading gang, so gang, to speak. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, you <laughs> and you run uh, just another foundry with your wife, Shoko, uh, who is watching with your kids now. So, yes, <laughs> 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 seeing, seeing daddy life on television. And you also published a book together no? about uh, kind of spice, uh, size specific adjustments in type design, yeah? optical sizing, <coughs> and uh, all the kind of underlying principles. But um, it's, it's a very interesting, fascinating book, important for today with a, host, a somewhat historical view. And uh, actually, I guess you're also a lot of people in the type scene, um, they know you for the remix tools, right? I think they do, yes. Uh, well, at least we are, we are certainly using it. We, we have some, no, everything good? Okay. Um, we certainly use it at Type Together and uh, it's, it's a powerful tool. So you have been kind of, you know, in fascinated, let's say, by this technology and then the visual, the shapes. Um, so you have been working a lot in, in that kind of tool development. But also you were one of the first um, web font technology adopters, let's say. Ah, yes, back then. Yes. Yeah, yeah, back then, exactly. It's, it's now indeed uh, 11 years, 12 yeah. years now that uh, we got web fonts. And uh, you worked at uh, Typekit, which was still a startup That's back true. then. That's true, yes, it was funny. Yeah, before it was Adobe. <laughs> before, exactly, <laughs> before it was acquired Adobe. So in the old days, you have to say now, it's, it's uh, yeah, we, we are in a new decade. Things are moving quickly, and yes, yes. <laughs> yes, the, the web funds have developed a lot. So, and... Of course, uh, I need to say you're a keen athlete, you told me. <laughs> you wanted to know something personal. Yes, yes. No, that's, that's really great. So, you know, athlete, the, the, the jumping, the throwing, the running kind of thing. No? And you also um, told me that your, your private best, your personal best is five centimeters higher than uh, no. Eric Spiekermann. No, lower. Lower? He, oh, his no. best. And his high best. Jump. It's five centimeters oh. more than me. Oh, he, damn it. He is, he is simply unbeatable. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and I wanted to congratulate you that you beat uh, Spiekermann. OK, next time. Yeah? <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> All right. OK. So um, you will, we will play. Uh, your your current on video Tim is here with us, uh, kind of launching the the tool current on kerning. You took on auto kerning. <laughs> yes, the, the the toughest challenge I've ever worked on. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> great. And so we'll hear now a little bit in Hello, about it. I'm okay. Kern on, your kerning assistant. You may ask. Do I do auto kerning, like taking a completely unkerned font and then automatically generating the kerning? I don't think we, the machines, are capable of that. It just can't be fully automated because some decisions are subjective and depend on the design. Do you prefer very tight kerning or something more cautious? Do you want to work with positive kerning at all? What defines the right amount of space between glyphs? How is the relation of straights, rounds, diagonals and possibly serifs? And finally, you may have glyphs that are spaced intentionally looser and this special spacing, as I call it, shouldn't be kerned away, of course. Instead of using lots of controls, which would be a bit tricky to handle, Let's work like this. 
you set a handful of pairs manually, which I then use as models to continue and complete your work. In other words, to kern on. We usually need around 50 of these model pairs. A model pair can be a real kerned pair or an explicitly unkerned pair, a zero model, which is just as useful for me. So, for each pair to be kerned, I compare it to all your models, which gives me a good idea of the right amount of kerning. While I start with no idea what the kerning could be for that pair, each model can narrow that possible range down. If there is a very similar model pair, I can be pretty sure what the kerning value has to be. If there isn't one particular matching model pair, then all the model pairs together will help me find a sensible value, especially if there is a good variety of shapes included in the models. In other words, what I do is to find out what the kerning for that pair can be without being inconsistent with any other pair. You could say, in the end, kerning is about the removal of inconsistencies. Oh wait, kerning is the removal of inconsistencies. That's exactly what it is. If any models are inconsistent between themselves, then it would result in that and sorry, I can't work like that and I'll have to remove a model. And if that cloud of models seems to have gaps, then allow me to suggest further models to give better definition for the auto current values to tighten the grip. So, you manually set a bunch of pairs, we discuss the models, then you tell me to kern on. Get a coffee while I work and then enjoy a fully kerned font with automatically optimized class kerning, of course. If you discover any wrong kerning pairs in your proof documents, you can always switch me on again, because I remember everything you told me. Add a few more models and I'll happily kern on again. Genau. Kernon works in practice. It's a plugin for glyphs, a kind of panel. If we start with an unkerned font, the first step is to give Kernon some pairs that are not to be kerned. That's a very useful starting point for the kerning engine. I'm starting with some uppercase. Just make sure to give Kernon a variety of shapes some rounds, diagonals, the E, and some lowercase, an N first, then a few more combinations with the N, because that's the neutral letter, so to speak. Let's start the engine and type in some text, and a very rough auto kerning is already at work. We have auto pairs and models. So far only 13 of them, but we'll definitely need more to get good kerning. If there's any kerning you don't like, simply adjust it and that turns it into a model. In the beginning, it's perfectly normal to get some really weird pairs, like these positive ones. But don't worry, Kernon will quickly learn as you add models. Let's not give up that quickly. Maybe another 20 models and we'll start to get sensible auto kerning. This one's almost there. Could be a little tighter for my taste. The slider here sets the kerning value and also reveals how kern on sees the pair. These are the hands of our little robot. The possible range the value can have without contradicting any of the models. If you see only a few tick marks, that means the range is very small, so there's not much uncertainty left. Here we see many tick marks. The automatic value is not as tightly defined. Kernon is not so sure about it. 
Even if it picks just the right kerning, it's often a good idea to switch it to a model to fill that hole in the cloud of models, which in the end tightens the grip on the auto pairs in general. Canon's got some suggestions for additional models. It's getting a little more interactive, a bit like a game or a discussion between you and the computer. TT Ah, XT. Hmm. Sometimes it's asking tricky questions. You don't have to set all the suggestions, of course. If Kernon thinks these models are inconsistent, it will give you a warning. It can just about get these two pairs to work together by loosening their grip a little. But at some point, if something's really contradicting each other, one of the models needs to be removed. Let's hope this doesn't turn into a real argument. If you are really sure you want that pair, you can try again and Canon will try to resolve the mismatch by removing something else instead. In the end, it should be possible to negotiate a set of models that both you and Canon consider consistent. Let's have a look at special spacing. What is it and why do we need it? You are probably practicing it already without having a name for it. To be honest, I had to invent that name, special spacing, because it's not discussed much, surprisingly. If we look at letters, it's quite clear we are trying to space and kern them so as to get the same visual space between each of them, trying to find the perfect side bearings to achieve that. Looking at punctuation, What's right is not as clearly defined and we usually end up with something that's spaced more loosely than the letters. The hyphen's got 68 compared to 18 for the T. This additional space, which I call special spacing, is practically a typographic decision. It's not possible for the computer to guess and, not surprisingly, it gets kerned away. To fix that, we say this glyph has special spacing and to define how much that added space is, we set a model. And if we tell Kernon that the insides of the different brackets are all supposed to have the same special spacing, it can help us achieve visual consistency for the related pairs. Consistency is really the only concept Kernon is interested in. We don't see what this added value is. Kernon handles that internally. These labels are like variables in a computer program. They have a name. You never see their value, but that's not necessary to work with them. So far, Kernon is only kerning what we type on the fly. Once you feel you have enough models, it's time to push that button and to kern the whole font. All right. Kernon is now generating the full kerning, also kerning classes and exceptions. And we're done for now. You can restart Kernon at any time and continue working just where you left. Well, fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> but you must have been so annoyed with kerning or what got you into, you know, with to, to even approach um, such a task? Well, it, it just felt like <clears throat> with the, the input I'm giving, it's, there's so much redundant information in it. I don't need to set, I mean, if we do normal kerning, it would be more than a thousand pairs, typically two or three thousand mm. pairs. Yeah. And surely it can't be necessary to input all that information as a human. Then we can't, we have, it must be possible to boil that down. And um, I, I just found that intriguing. Okay. And um, I, I tried all kinds of different methods to, to automate kerning and ended up with um, that one, with using models. Models, um, right, yeah. yeah. So is that also kind of you're using rules in a way, like uh, we were listening before to cues or in, in terms of approach, a conceptual approach, is that, or is that, would you say, different? Your um, well, Kernon is 
deriving some kind of, well, they are not binary rules as in if this, then that. Right. It's more like a continuous uh, thing, like saying, um, if you have an, an A and a V, uh, the, the V usually has a bit, is a bit looser at the top, but how much is it? Like a continuous so that's thing. a question that, um, that you answer by, by setting the models and then Kernan understands. Right, right. Um, and other, other than that, it's lots of comparison. It's just comparing, mm. comparing, comparing. Yeah, yeah, Comparing but on comparisons, it's, uh, right, right. <laughs> that's the essence of really it. Really quickly, no? On, on mm. the fly, I mean, you, mm. you kind of do it sort of live. Mm. Um, do we have, let's see if we have any questions from the audience. I only saw that people were very happy with also your remix tools. Mm -hmm. And I think some people already used Kernan. Um, Ah, okay, we have uh, we have a basic kerning sheet we use to get started already now. Is it worthwhile to kern these about 60 pairs or does the tool need to go about it with its own pairs first? Um, no, if you, if you have a kerning sheet, then that's mm -hmm. probably a variety of shapes, isn't it? If you have, I, I just try to imagine that, sh yeah, that yeah. sheet, probably it's got some strong pairs like LT and maybe some rounds and diagonals. Probably, yeah. and, um, so if you already have a selection of different prototypical kerning cases, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then that would be uh, perfect, of course. Great. Yeah, it, it sounds like, mm -hmm. I mean, you were talking about these models or even models like HH that you definitely mm. don't want to have a current pair no? or that you don't want positive currents. Mm. Okay. Um, we have another question. How can we help to add support for scripts other than Latin to Kern on? Um, <laughs> just <laughs> that's, get from, in touch. that's from Evan. From Evan. Okay. Yeah. So um, to, um, I've got this internal list of pairs, like Unicode pairs that, that get auto kerned and that's based on some kind of pipeline. It starts okay. with um, Wikipedia in 200 languages and one mm -hmm. million tweets, and then you've got all these scripts, all right. several scripts, and, and it uh, just crunches all that stuff and tidies up some stuff and boosts some rare scripts. So um, if, you, if you're working on a script that you think can be auto in general, mm -hmm. but it's not in that list yet, just get in touch, and it, it's probably quite quick to uh, switch that on. Okay. But Oh, wow. I, yeah, I'm expecting to to need some help from people who are actually working on these scripts. Sure. Um, I mean, I imagine kind of uh, Latin similar scripts, let's say Cyrillic or Greek, would be a bit easier no, yes. than perhaps Arabic or, or Devanagari. Yes. Um, well, a Greek and Cyrillic is already included. Okay. Um, All right. Okay. Super. And a few um, Armenian, Georgian. Thai, Lao, really? I think. Wow, you've been busy. Th okay. were, no, that's the, that's oh, the that's, easy that's thing. It's, it's okay. just one line of code at the very beginning right, right, of right. this um, text crunching algorithm. Okay. I just need to know which, which other scripts I, that makes sense to include. Right, so it okay. may be really easy to just switch them on. Okay. Well, we have a, a quote or comment from John, John Hudson. This is the kerning tool I have dreamt of for many years. So, mm. you know, kudos. I remember describing the concept of iterative automated kerning with the designer providing feedback models to Peter Kagov. Wow. Mm. So glad that you actually built it, wow. you know. He's my hero, yes, Peter Kagov. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when can we give you money for kern on? Now. <laughs> now, it's live. Slash buy. There yeah. we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's live. Excellent. Thank you very much. Perfect. So mm. I think we'll uh, have a slightly longer break now. Uh, actually, on the socializing, if you go in Vito in the column, there's a networking break. There's a link to Zoom with the ID and, and password and come and join and chat. And um, perhaps Tim will join for a moment there on the Zoom, so you can, you can even uh, well, post more questions or just say hello. And we'll see you in about 15 minutes. Thank you. Mm -hmm.